Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about the coronary vessels, the blood supply to the heart. So here we have a diagram of the heart. Here is the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. The heart is a muscular pump which requires energy and oxygen in order for it to function properly. The blood supply to the heart comes from the arteries. And these arteries are the coronary arteries which come off the ascending aorta. There are two main branches, the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. The left coronary artery further has two other big main branches called the left anterior interventricular artery, also known as the left anterior descending artery, and then the left circumflex artery. The right coronary artery in the front here gives off a branch called the right marginal artery. So again, this is the anterior view of the heart. Let's look at the posterior view of the heart. So here I'm drawing the left circumflex artery, which is wrapping around the left side of the heart. On the other side, on the right, the right coronary artery is wrapping around the right. And the right coronary artery gives off the branch called the posterior interventricular artery. Just to complete this diagram, here you have your right atrium and your right ventricle. Now, because the heart has its own blood supply, it obviously has to have its own venous drainage. And so these are the coronary veins, which actually drain into the right atrium through what's called the coronary sinus. So the coronary sinus drains into the right atrium. The coronary veins are not very important to remember, but it's easy. The small cardiac vein is on the right side, then you have the middle cardiac vein here, and your great cardiac vein, which actually wraps around to the left anterior part of the heart. There's also a small branch here called the posterior vein. So that was the anterior view and the posterior view of the coronary vessels. Let us now cut a cross section of the heart here and look at where the coronary arteries come off the aorta and also where the coronary sinus drains into the right atrium. So here we have a cross section of the area. Here is the anterior, the front part of the heart and the posterior, the back of the heart. Here you have your right atrium and your left atrium just to show where we are. Here is the coronary sinus where the veins drain into and it will drain into the right atrium. Of course, your atrium, your right and left, have the valves. In the right atrium, you have your tricuspid valve. In your left, you have your mitral valve. And in front of these, you have your other valves, the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. After the aortic valve, at the ascending aorta, you have the two branches of the coronary arteries. The right coronary artery coming off the right side and then the left coronary artery, which further divides into the left circumflex artery and the left anterior interventricular artery. I now want to focus only on the coronary arteries. So here I'm drawing the aorta, and here you have the coronary arteries branching off after the valve. You have your right coronary artery in the front, and then coming off it, the right marginal artery. You have your left coronary artery and then your left circumflex artery and also coming off the left coronary artery is your anterior interventricular artery also known as your anterior descending artery now if we focus on the right coronary artery remember it wraps around the right side of the heart and it will give off a branch called the posterior interventricular artery your left circumflex artery wraps around your left side of the heart and actually it will give off a branch called the left marginal artery. So how do the coronary arteries give oxygen to the heart muscle cells? In order to understand this concept, we have to learn about the two important phases of uh, the heart, which are systole and diastole. So in systole, what happens is the ventricles are contracting, ejecting blood out of the heart. So in systole, your aortic valve is open and you can imagine the heart is ejecting blood out. It is actually in diastole, when the aortic valves are closed, the 
the blood will actually come down slightly and this is the period where blood will flow down through the coronary arteries and then supply the heart muscle with blood with oxygen for energy. I hope that concept made sense. Now for some clinical anatomy. Your coronary arteries, like all arteries in your body, can form plaques within them. These are fatty deposits. And when they get so big in the coronary arteries, they can cause what's called coronary artery disease or ischemic heart disease. This is where there's a reduction of blood flow to the myocardium. And the major cause is atherosclerosis. When blood perfusion is reduced to the myocardium, it can cause simple angina or it can cause something more serious called acute coronary syndrome. The other important uh, clinical anatomy to know is acute coronary syndrome, the most, the most serious being a STEMI, an ST elevated myocardial infarction. So here I'm drawing the layers of the heart. And here you have your coronary vessels, your coronary artery in red and your coronary veins in blue, which is actually below the pericardium. And these vessels, the coronary artery normally supplies the myocardium as shown. However, if there is an occlusion in the artery, you can get an infarction of the myocardium. A STEMI is where there's total occlusion of the coronary artery supplying an area of the myocardium, resulting in a transmural infarction. 